Hello, hello, hello! Hello! How you guys doing? It is the very first Daily Rant recording of 2021. Today's date is Tuesday, January 5th, 2021. Thanks for stopping by. So glad you could join me for a little while. And, uh, you know, I hope you all had a wonderful holiday. I hope your Christmas and New Year's was good. Mine was pretty good. We had a nice dinner at uh, Christmas time, and uh, I had my uncle over, and we we all enjoyed a nice meal. Got very full, and uh, New Year's was pretty good. We had uh, my uncle over again. We had beer and pizza, and Jello shots, and we watched the ball drop, and then we all went to bed. <laughs> pretty much. That's that's how the uh, new year was brought in but i hope you're all doing well out there i hope you're staying safe and staying healthy amid the covid pandemic there were some things i wanted to discuss a couple of things and i i know i've mentioned this briefly in other daily rant recordings and i don't want to start off a new year you know being a carbon copy of of 2020 with you know the same old thoughts over and over and over again but there were some things i wanted to talk about and um you know, it is a new year. I mean, okay, it's a new year, 2021. We are still stuck in the same uh, situation in, in our society. I don't know if you've noticed this, but we are definitely stuck in this very peculiar situation in society in terms of uh, language barriers. I'm not talking about, you know, like being bilingual or whatever. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about language barriers in terms of context. This, as far as I can tell, has been an ongoing issue for many, many years, even you know prior to the Daily Rant recordings. And I, I think I even tried to introduce this topic in one of my Sunday video updates, or maybe perhaps several of my Sunday video updates over the years. But one of the, the, the major language barriers that we have, and it's still to this day very imminent is the word love for some strange reason we have gotten to this point or this 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 position in our in our history that we can't express to our friends that we love them we care about them that we are always thinking about them we can't, for some reason, we cannot express our true feelings to our friends. People that we call brothers and sisters and people we consider family. For some reason, we cannot express our true instinctual feelings about our friends and people that we hold close to and, and, and dear to our hearts. Some, for some reason, we can't get there. And, and you know I mean this happens a lot too like I, I always tell my friends that I love them regardless men women doesn't matter you're my friend I love you I care about you I always tell my friends that and even my family I tell them I love them you know they're my family but um especially my friends you know I, I always tell my friends that I love them and for some reason, or not, I, I don't know why that is. I, I, I just can't put my finger on it. But for some strange reason, it's like they, they I don't know, they just don't react in the way that maybe I'm hoping that they would when I say I love you or whatever the case may be. Or if they do tell me they love me, they have to add a qualifier on the end of it. Love you too, friend. And it's like, what What do you think I mean by that? When I tell you I love you, what do you think I mean? Of course we're friends. I don't need the qualifier. You know, I don't I don't need that that last and final word just to make it look good, you know, or to make it look like the the friendship is platonic. Of course the friendship is platonic. When I'm when I speak to women, especially married women. I tell them I, I love them and I care about them and their family, of course. But for some reason, when they say it back to me, it's it's like it it, it just feels foreign to them. Like, I don't know if I should be saying the word love. 
what do you think I mean by the word love? You know, we the 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 issue, and I know this for a fact because I've experienced this with other people. They've made their true colors known. That any time you say the word love, where does her brain go? Immediately goes to sex. They automatically associate and correlate the word love with sex. Now, when I tell my friends that I love them, that's that's in a non-sexual way. And I don't know how many times I've had to disclose that information to them that I love you, of course I love you as a friend, what the fuck did you think I meant by that? It was never like this before. It was never like this before. There was a time when you could tell your friends love you and they tell you I love you back, and you would just not, you know, you wouldn't give it a second thought. You would just say what you want to say and just go about your life. And, you know, every so often you, you meet up with those friends, you run into them, you call them or whatever the case may be. And at the end of every conversation, you could always say, I love you. And then they tell you, I love you too. It has gotten so bad nowadays because the world, um, although according to Steven Pinker, we are in like the best of all possible times to be alive with all the technology and, and the innovation and everything, which is, to that extent, I understand. But come on, when I tell my friends how much I love them, yeah, there, there's a deep feeling going on there, but it's not a sexual feeling. So if you're one of those people, one of those friends that I talk to and I always tell you how much I love you, what do you, I, I have to ask, what do you think I mean by that? Of course it's nothing sexual. I mean, I, I can't believe I even would I, I would even have to go that route to actually explain how and what I feel. I say these words, what do I actually mean by that? Nothing nefarious. I love my friends. I mean, what's the big fucking deal? And why is it such a big deal for you to actually say it back to me? Say, we, I love you too, Jared. A lot of my friends tell me they love me, which is great, and I don't question it, you know, I never question, well, what do you, I wonder what they really mean by that, no, they love me as a friend, come on, you know, and that's how I love my friends, as friends, but the thing is, check it out, I don't have to put qualifiers every fucking time I say I love you, I don't have to say I love you friend, because I would only hope that they understand that when I tell them I love them, it just means I love them as a friend. I, I would hope that they would already know that in their minds. And I would only hope that they're not reading shit about me on Facebook and allowing for other people to influence how they look at me or how they view me or what they think about me, which has happened. That's why I say you have to go by evidence instead of what a bunch of people have to say because those people can be wrong. They can fill your head with, with this notion that I'm this horrible guy. And I'm not. I'm not. I am someone who is capable of loving my friends and keeping you know the relationship platonic. And I have been in love with people, with women, absolutely. There is a huge divide between loving your friends unconditionally platonically versus loving or being in love with with an individual there's a big difference big difference and it, it always it, it's it always chokes me every time like I tell my friends I say I love you I hope you're doing well they have to say love you too friend which is kind of annoying in a way you know it, it, to to an extent to a, to a certain point it does get annoying because it's like why do you always have to put the fucking qualifiers at the end of course I know we're friends I know you're a married person I tell my friends I love them all the time and of course I understand that they're married and I'm not meaning this in a sexual way because let me tell you something if I actually meant something sexually you know towards a woman or any even a man although I'm not gay, but even if I expressed something more than just a platonic friendship or platonic relationship, 
you would definitely know the difference. <laughs> and I would make sure that you knew the difference. You know, I don't just say I love you and, you know, have some kind of secret hidden meaning behind it. Like, this is how I really feel. No, I love my friends as my friends. I don't have to put the qualifiers at the end. But because we live in such a, a different world now, this world is so hypersensitive and people are constantly high strung and they automatically assume the worst. No matter what you say, what you do, people are constantly scared. And here, I'm just a guy who, uh, you know, child of cancer survivor. I express my true feelings to my friends because I, I feel that they deserve the real true Jared Fuller. They deserve the real parts of me, not what I want them to hear. I'm not, I, I never, I don't tell people things that they want to hear, you know, just to make it look good. I tell people the truth. I say, I really and truly love and care about you, and I fucking mean it every step of the way. I mean that. Why is that so hard for you to accept and to comprehend and understand? Well, we really don't know you all that well, Jared. I really don't know you all that well either. But I don't have to know you front to back to know that when someone is in need of help, you should help them. And you should always, always, always love as many people as you can. That's it. Now, I know I, I, I've gone on record saying a lot of hurtful things about some people not everybody but some you know but that's me that 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 was just me getting a little bit of revenge and, and defending myself and sticking up for myself when nobody else will and that's another thing you know you call me your friend but you're gonna let these people treat me this way well i i kind of get where you're coming from when you say well it's not my fight which it's true it's not your fight and i'm not expecting you to actually step in and say, you know what, you don't fucking talk about him like that. I'm not expecting you to do that. But I mean, what what's happened to a real friendship? Whatever happened to sticking up for your friends? That's a true friend. Whatever happened to that? We are in a totally and completely different age. Nobody understands true friendship anymore. This It's a new generation. It's a new day and age it's a new era nobody really and truly understands love anymore they don't understand what true uh, friendship is what what true companionship is to be an actual confidant true camaraderie no one understands what this means anymore because the new generation is teaching their kids an entirely different idea of what love is or what they think love is they have no fucking clue. I, I grew up in a different time. Not too different from now. I was born in 1986. But even then, we told our friends we, we, you know, we loved our friends. And they told us back, we love you too. And when I was a kid, we didn't have all this technology. We had the internet. You know, the internet was just blossoming into fruition. We were starting to be introduced to, like, instant messenger and, and email and things like that that was in the early 90s that was like back in 90 91 something like that when AOL was first coming out so the 90s were you know that's when the the dawn of the internet really started to come about so as a kid I mean the internet existed but we didn't have it in the household you know we weren't as connected back then as we are now we're connected now more than ever and I like the idea that now I can text people, I can email people, you know, they can call me if they want to call me, they can, you know, the video chatting thing, which I also love, you can video chat with me anytime you want, anytime you want, I have no problem with that, but now it's just, we are in an, we are in an entirely different time, this is a new day and age of, you know, you got the, the technology, people are, connected now more than ever as I said but maybe the, the issue is we are too connected like we can't take a shit without the, the world knowing that we took a shit we can't so much as go to the park without 
somebody knowing that, oh, Jared Fuller went to the park. Oh, Jared Fuller went on a joyride to Lansing. Oh, he's, he's here, he's there, he's hanging with these people, he's hanging with those people. You can't so much as hiccup without the fucking world knowing what you're doing. So maybe in that regard, we're a little too connected. But come on, I, I can love my friends in a non-sexual way. I've, I've gone over this I don't know how many times. And no matter how many times I try to explain this, that you can, you can love someone non-sexually, no matter how many times I try to explain contexts of words, there's always going to be some jackass out there who purposely gets it wrong, either because they have some kind of personal vendetta against you, and they're doing it as a way to get back at you, they're doing it as a way to retaliate, or maybe, just maybe, they are that fucking gone mentally, and that's not a cheap shot at, at people with mental issues, but maybe they are that far gone mentally to where the word love always correlates with sex. And for me, that's just not the case. I, I don't view that, you know, I, I love my mom and dad. So do you mean to tell me by, by saying that, mom and dad, I love you? You mean to tell me that that, that could be a, a sexual desire? Well, it's not. They're my parents. They brought me into the fucking world. And sometimes I get upset at them for that. It's like, why the fuck would you bring me into this world, you know? Because it's crazy. The world is crazy. But the thing is, is I can tell my mom and dad I love them. It doesn't mean that there, there's something hidden going on. I'm not that kind of a person. And if, if that were really and truly the, the case where... I had some kind of desire for my parents, which is fucking disgusting. But let's say, for sake, you know, for, for the for the sake of this conversation or this point rather, that I did, then I would seek help. But I don't think that way about my parents. It's just fucking sick. But you know, I don't think that way about about my my mom and dad. I can tell my mom and dad. I tell my brothers I love them. They know that, you know, I mean, we're brothers. Of course we, we love each other. We're brothers. I tell my friends the same thing over and over. I love you. I'm not in love with you, if that makes sense. I love you as a friend. The friendship is entirely platonic. I'm, you know, a lot of my female friends, especially the female friends who are married, I tell them I love them anyway because... This is my this is my biggest driving force behind why I always tell my friends and my close family members friends that I love them every chance I get. Well, first of all, I grew up in a in a house where um you know my my grandparents, my you know my mom and dad, you know their parents weren't necessarily the greatest. So they grew up in, in homes where, you know, the parents were abusive. My grandpa was a drunk. He drank whiskey. Uh, I, that would be my dad's dad. He was a drunk back in the day. He was very abusive to his children. He was an absentee father. He was never around for my dad. And my dad and my uncle, they were left to care for my grandmother because she had epilepsy, which is my dad's mom. She had epilepsy. And because Grandpa was never around, they had to go out and work and bust their asses just to make sure that there was food in the house, to make sure that rent was paid, to make sure that my grandma was taken care of. Because back in the day, back in the 60s, you know, they would always tell you to put a spoon in the person's mouth if they were having an epileptic seizure so they don't bite their tongue off. Nowadays, they tell you don't do that because you can break the teeth or whatever. But that's what th those were the responsibilities that my dad had, because my uncle Danny and my dad were the two oldest, so they were left to care for my grandma when my grandpa was gone. He was an absentee, good for nothing father, and when he was around, he was drunk. He beat the shit out of my grandmother. He beat the shit out of my dad. He beat the shit out of my uncle Tim. He beat the shit out of. Danny, I think a few Uncle Danny a few times. He let my dad's. I mean, okay, this is this is a story that I'm going to share briefly. Aunt Cheryl caught a mattress on fire. 
So what did my grandpa do? He took a lighter and he held it to the, the tips of my dad's fingers, one by one, and Tim, and Danny. Now, that's a, I mean, back then, child abuse wasn't something that was pressed, as not, not like now. Back then, it was, a, it was a, a completely different time. But my grandpa was an abusive son of a bitch, especially when he drank whiskey. He tried to drown my grandmother. He tried to kill her. Um, he was just, he was all around a, a fucking dick. Well, now that, you know, my dad had, had, you know, grew up and had kids of his own, he acts very differently towards his own children. In which case, we grew up in a very loving environment. My mom grew up in, in the same kind of household, except her mom was very abusive. My grandma was very abusive to my mother. And my mom was the youngest of 17 children, and um, my grandma was very abusive. Very abusive, and, and my mom had to watch my grandma just... she would, My grandma would get drunk. And she would literally try to dig out my grandfather's eyeballs. Literally tried to dig his fucking eyes out. She was mean when she was drunk. She was a mean drunk. My mom had grown up in a broken household as well. She had difficulty trying to understand how to love my brother and myself. So my both of my parents had grown up in broken households. But they never... They, they made sure. I mean, there were a lot of times when I, when I felt that my mother was unjustified in punishing me for things that weren't deserving of punishment. You know, like if I wanted to go inside the store with my dad. No, I had to sit in the car, and if I disobeyed her, I was getting, you know, hit with a belt. And it did happen. Um, I felt that a lot of the punishments were unjustified. But in any event, I mean, when I was sick with cancer, I mean, that's where I really learned a lot about what it means to love people. Because I'm telling you, when you're pushed to the edge of life, where, hey, this can end at any moment at any given time. When you're pushed to the edge like that one too many times where, you know, and it wasn't just childhood cancer. It was living in my car because we were homeless for a short time. Um my parents divorced, I was sexually abused, I was going through all kinds of shit growing up. But being pushed to the edge like that, as many times as I was, and there are still times when I'm pushed to the edge, but having survived all of that, and we were, you know, we were a, a, a solid family unit. It was, it was my brother and I, because my oldest brother, Wayne, he lived in Saginaw with his mom, which was, you know, from my dad's first marriage. So he was in Saginaw most of the time. So I really didn't get to see Wayne a lot when I was a kid. But but again, like I said, being pushed to the edge as many times as I was in my life, what, what else is there in life but to love people? That's why I'm so loving and caring about people because I've led a very hard life too. And even with that being said, when I was, you know advocating for cures and I was trying to be a voice for child of cancer I wasn't trying to steal a spotlight now a lot of people would argue that and they would probably be in you know within reason to argue that but that's not why I raised awareness it was my way of saying you know what I fucking had it hard too man I know exactly what your kids are going through that's why I can relate more to the kids than the parents can and I know people don't necessarily like that idea. They don't accept it very enthusiastically, but I think at some point they do understand what I'm trying to say. And, you know, of course, they'll never admit that they're right, and I'll never hear an admission from these people. And I don't need to hear it because I already know it. But to, to be pushed to the edge that many times in life, what else is there? You have to love people. You have to implement love. But you also have to defend yourself too. And having been pushed to the edge that many times in my life, I had learned how to be strong-willed. I had to learn how to survive a lot of different, you know, a lot of different things. I had no other choice. I had to. 
and I, I've had it rough my entire life. I think we all have. So I'm not coming on here saying, you know what, my life is so much worse than everybody else's, and, and I didn't have parents who loved me. My parents loved me, but because of the abuse that they sustained when they were kids, I think it, they, they had a different way of showing how much they loved their children. My mom and dad did everything. They, th My dad worked his fingers to the bone. I mean, th there was a time when, you know, we, we lived in the farmhouse on Chapin Road. It's where we lived when I was diagnosed with cancer. There was a time I can remember when we ran out of heat. And, you know, we it, it, it was a big farmhouse. So we had the living room, the dining room, and our kitchen. My dad rigged up blankets to partition off the living room from the dining room and then another sheet blanket to partition off the kitchen from the dining room and I can remember I remember it like it was yesterday because when you go from when when you would go from the dining room into the kitchen there was an archway it was an arch it wasn't like a regular you know square walk through it was an arch and my dad rigged up a blanket. He had a blanket rigged up. We slept on the kitchen floor in front of our cook stove, in front of our oven. We had I was in the middle, mom was on one side, Jay was next to me, and dad was next to Jay. We all slept on the kitchen floor. We had it rough, I'm telling you. It we we, we hit some rough patches in, in our lives. But after having gone through all that you know, I, I, I come here, even in, in, in the Daily Rant, to say that, you know what? I had a hard life, too. But because of the things I've been through, not in spite of the things I've been through, because of what I've been through, I just try to implement love. And when I when I ingratiated myself with the, the childhood cancer world, when I tried to make myself known to people, it was my way of saying, I've had it rough, too. I know what that that is. I know what it's like to, to have to have chemo and radiation. I my body's been through some of the most horrific things. I can relate to your child situation. You don't have to agree with a lot of my opinions and you don't have to agree with my particular way and style of doing things, but nonetheless, I am a child of cancer survivor and I'm here to, to share my story and I'm here to tell you exactly how it is. I'm not here to bullshit anybody. I've been lied to enough my whole life to actually know how important it is to tell the truth about everything. And one of the things that I tried to always tell the truth about when I was an advocate for child of cancer was to give you know, as soon as I learned some information, I would pass it along. I would always make sure that other people knew exactly what I had gone through, according to testimony from my parents, according to testimony from my medical professionals, people who were there. They were like, you know, they were they were there when when everything was unfolding. They were there, and those are the kinds of stories that I like to hear. And there, there, there were just a lot of rough times. So for me to tell my friends that I love you, that's me. And most of my friends are from are from the child who cancer world anyway. I have lots of friends who are um, also in the entertainment industry. They they are actors, actresses, musicians. I have lots of connections. I've I've had the pleasure of meeting a lot of those people in person. I mean, I text some of them once in a while. Um, they understand that when I tell them I love them, it's entirely platonic. Because uh, I'm telling you straight, if if it was really and truly a sexual thing, oh, you would know about it. <laughs> you would definitely know about it. I would make sure you'd know about it. I don't keep anything hidden. I don't keep any of my feelings hidden. No way. But when I tell my friends that I love them, it's always platonic. It's always platonic. There's no hidden agenda. There's no hidden feelings going on. I can distinguish. My brain understands and can distinguish and discern between 
loving a friend platonically versus being in love. And there are just far too many people nowadays. We are, in, like I said, we're in entire different times. People are constantly associating love with sex. And that's where, um, that's where the wheels fell off, I think. That's really where the wheels fell off because even when I write poetry, it doesn't matter if I'm writing poetry just to write the poem or if I'm writing a poem for a, a cancer warrior or a good friend of mine, I always put love. I always try to include the word love. Kind of like Diana Ross and the Supremes, you know, Diana, like every fucking song title, there's somewhere mentions love. You know, love is here, now you're gone. Love is like an itching in my heart, love child kind of like that but uh you know that that's that's where i'm at that's why i i always make sure i tell my friends that um i love you but the bigger issue the the main point which i have not gotten to yet because i kind of sidetracked a little bit but the main issue why i always say i love you is because of the fact that tomorrow is not a guarantee what if what if one of us doesn't make it tomorrow? What if the COVID what if the COVID claimed my life? Well we'll go with that. What if around Thanksgiving when I had the COVID, what if I would have died as a result of COVID? Never again would you have had the opportunity to to hear me tell you that I love you. You wouldn't have ever again received text messages from my number telling you how much I love and care about you. You would, you'll never get that from me ever again. You wouldn't have. Because I know that tomorrow is not guaranteed. And you listening, you know this as well. Tomorrow is not guaranteed. I don't want you to, to be afraid or to feel guilty or even uncomfortable to tell me you love me. I'm not going to take it in, in any other way. If we're friends and we communicate... And if I tell you I love you, you can tell me you love me back. You, you don't have to feel guilty about it. You don't have to feel embarrassed or, or uncomfortable. Because if you tell me you love me, if I, I, I tell you I love you, you tell me you love me back. We're friends. You can love your friends. That's possible. There's no, there's no hidden agenda. There's no hidden innuendo involved. We're friends. Friends can love each other, whether it be a, a, a man who is friends with a woman and vice versa, or men who are friends with men, women who are friends with women. It doesn't matter. As a matter of fact, there was there was a, a good buddy of mine. Um, he is a he's the father of of a cancer survivor. He always tells me he loves me because I tell him I love you, brother. I want you to be happy. I hope. I hope your son is doing good. I hope you and, and the wife and the child are doing okay. It's me expressing my, my true sentiments to people that I really and truly love and care about. Because if I pass up an opportunity to say those words and something should happen to me, they're never going to know how I felt. They will never know how I felt. So, and, and he even, I, I think, he did a Facebook Live video or he did like a video recording. And I, rem I remember this because it was so very well said. You know, he was very eloquent with his language. And like I said, he's, he's I consider him a brother. He's like one of, uh, one of the very few good friends that I have left. But he, he expressed himself. He says, you know, I always tell my friends that I love them. It has nothing to do with homosexuality. It has nothing to do with, you know, like, hint, hint, wink, wink, I want to fuck you. It's nothing like that. I love you because tomorrow I may not get the opportunity to tell you this. There's a lot of people that, that you know, I love absolutely with all my heart. There isn't anything I would never do for them. I take the shirt off my back for anybody. 
and I know that you know you can listen to the Sunday video updates, you can listen to the prior daily rant recordings, and you can form your own opinions. Oh, Jared is a nasty, disgusting, gross individual. I'm I'm explaining to you. First of all, because a lot of the time I get so frustrated and aggravated with particular individuals that I need to speak out and say, you know what, I've fucking had enough. And if you're treating me this way, which differentiates from the kind of persona and, and the facade that you want to put on social media, I'm going to call it out publicly because people have a right to know if they're being duped. People have a right to know if they're being lied to. And that, that's what's going on. I'm not a hateful, spiteful person. I love with all my heart, but if you rub me the wrong way or if you if you upset me in any way, if you do me wrong, you're going to know about it. And furthermore, the, the whole thing about love, you know, it, it's... I, I just don't understand how we ever came to that point in the history of, of society. We can't say, love you, we can't say anything that actually fucking matters. And that's really disheartening and depressing. And I would dare say, you know, they say that social media is, is part of the reason why depression is up. And, and I do agree, because when I was on social media, I fucking felt depressed all the time. Now that I don't have social media, I'm not depressed. Granted, there's a lot of people I miss speaking to. But I'm not depressed. I don't feel as, as anxious about, you know, like, what are they saying about me this time? What are they? I don't care anymore what, what people say about me. They can say whatever the fuck they want. They can share whatever they want. They can say, oh, see, this is, this is uh, Jared saying this, and, we're, you know, whatever. What the fuck ever. Say whatever you want. Share whatever you want. I know who I am. I'm capable of, of great love. I'm capable of, of caring about people. But then I lost myself trying to please everybody else when I first started to, you know, become ingratiated with, uh, the, you know, childhood cancer, getting involved with, with helping to make a difference, trying to, which it, th nothing's changed. Nothing has changed. Nothing will change. I don't you know, I don't, I don't see anything major happening with that. It's never going to change for the better. Uh, it's always going to be the same as it's always been since for how many years it's been going on. But the thing is, is that when I tried to get involved, I tried to get people to know me, uh, I was a constant people pleaser. I had to really mind my P's and Q's. I had to be like a... a uh, a clean cut, you know, don't use foul language and don't don't say the F word and, and you can't express yourself because if you offend anybody, now they're going to write you off as this, see, I had a feeling about that, Jared Fuller. Well, you know what? I've had a feeling about you too, but I'm still going to treat you nicely until such time as you give me a reason to not treat you nicely. And, and and something that I can actually prove with evidence. I'm going to treat you accordingly. And that's the one th element about ourselves that we lost because with social media, now we're in this kind of you know mob mentality where no one thinks for themselves. They jump on bandwagons. They perpetuate and foster misinformation, gossip, lies, rumors, etc., who wants to live in that kind of a world? I don't. I have a right to be angry and frustrated when people are lying about me and treating me like crap. I have every right to feel the way I do. And when you treat someone like crap, you then don't get to turn around and play victim when they fight back. And that's exactly what happened um, with the childhood cancer thing. And social media just... It, it's It's... It's breeding grounds for perfidy and, and, you know, misinformation, which is why I'm glad I'm not a part of that anymore. But I, I got fed up with, you know, why is it okay for these people to talk shit about me, but the minute I defend myself, it's like either way I'm a bad guy. Either way I lose. 
you, they're either going to believe what people are saying about me, the lies, or if I defend myself, they're going to believe I'm a bad guy anyway. They think I'm just randomly exploding on people. Well, if, if either way I lose, you know what, I might as well just defend myself and say, fuck you motherfuckers, I'm going to put you in your place and I'm going to tell it like it is. But that doesn't mean that I'm, I'm incapable of loving and understanding and trying to be the best person I can be. It just means I'm not going to take your shit. I was a people pleaser for all those years. I had to bite my tongue. I had to remain civil, even when people were being shitty. I had to bite my tongue. I'm done biting my tongue. Fuck that. I'm over that. That, that part of, of, you know, that phase is long gone. I've had enough. I had to constantly put on a happy face and smile and ignore and pretend as if nothing was bothering me. and It festered up through the years. And finally, I just I got so tired, I just said, fuck this. I'm not going to hold my tongue. I'm not going to stop, you know, doing what I'm doing because thinking or, or oh, I wonder what people are going to think. I don't give a fuck what people think. I just don't. But I am capable of love. And that's the one thing that no one can say that I'm not capable of. They can't deny that. I have only ever tried to love people. I know it might be hard for you to believe. But um, I've only ever tried to love people. That's it. I've always had everyone's uh, best interest at heart. And... Uh, all I ever wanted to do was help. However, uh, you know, I'm still someone who loves very much. And if I tell you I love you, I mean, what what do you think it means? I'm not in. I'm not romantically involved with anyone at the moment. And if I were, they would know that I was in love with them, and they would know exactly what I mean by love. Like if I'm if I'm sexually attracted to you and I want to fuck you and this, that, and the other, I want you in the worst way. I want you so bad. Oh, they would know because the language is different. But for me to say I love you and I care about you and I want what's best for you and your family, that's that's as real as it gets. Yeah, I, I don't know of any other way to to describe that. And it's not just what you say, it's how you show it. When you actually care about people, th there's, and I, you know, there's, I, I'm not going to drop names, but I do have friends, other friends who've grown up in broken households where the parents were shitty, where, and, and this, this explains a lot, um, by the way, this explains a lot about why so many of these people are trying to make themselves look like superstars in the childhood cancer world. This is exactly why. Because they had shitty parents, they weren't shown love, no one ever told them they loved them, um, they were always chosen last, sometimes they probably weren't even chosen at all, they were never invited to parties or sleepovers, they never had a lot of friends, they were recluse, you know, they, they kept to themselves because they never fit in with anybody. And now that they found this one thing, childhood cancer, they found this one thing where they can make themselves look accomplished and achieved. And now the spotlight is on me and, and all eyes are on me. All attention is focused on me. I am the star. That's what's happening. And it's really a shame that people would resort to this childhood cancer of all things in the world, of, of all the different uh, ailments and health issues that are um, plaguing children every day, why childhood cancer? There are lots of different causes. I'm not saying everybody does this, by the way. I don't want to make a blanket statement by saying that, you know, there, people's intentions aren't pure, but we can see this. We can, we can actually see this with, with a lot of people that their intentions are not genuine. Myself, I mean, naturally, 
my intentions were genuine because I actually had to live through that. I had to go through that. I had to walk the plank, so to speak, you know, in, in regards to childhood cancer. A lot of the parents are serious about this because their children are currently in treatment or they, you know, they just, they come about and say, well, you know what, my kid had gone through this and I'm glad that part of his life is over, which is fine. But a lot of these people, they, they, they take it to the extreme, you know. Well, I'm getting a lot of attention for this. I'm getting a lot of praise and, and a lot of approval and a lot of, of adoration because, you know, finally the spotlight's on me. I'm the star. I'm getting all the attention. I'm, you know, the focus is on me for once. People are actually looking to me. I'm the center of attention. I'm, I'm the, the, the focal point of attention. I am the focus now. That's what's happening. And people are using this for, for very sour reasons. Very sour reasons. And I, I, I can't help but get over that hurdle. That's why I always say, you know what, when I, when I was advocating for cures and all the charity work I was involved with, including poetry, bird shirts, whatever the case may be, everything I did, I did for the individual. I did for the children. I didn't do it for the cause. There's a difference. There is a delineation between doing things for the cause versus doing things for the children. The cause is the superficial end of things where you got to be seen and heard on, in, in every fucking major newspaper, every fucking radio station, television programs, podcasts. You have to have your name and your face plastered all over everything, which makes your deeds disingenuous. You're not a celebrity. You're not changing the fucking world. You just paid someone's mortgage. That's it. If you're, especially if you're a CEO of a nonprofit organization, you did exactly what the nonprofit organization is supposed to do. You don't deserve the extra pats on the back. If I had a nonprofit organization, yes, I would be helping a lot of people, but the whole world wouldn't have to know every little fucking thing I did because that is a sign of insecurity. Just ask Tom Mitchell. He is the most confident, insecure person in the world. Mel Tyson, he's just doing this for himself. Ronnie Duvall, same way. Carrie Rickman, Debbie Carver, Cindy Gibson, same way. They're doing this for them. They're doing this for the cause because they need the spotlight. They need the attention. They need the adulation. Well, Jared, why why are you doing the, the, the Daily Rant recordings? Why do you do Sunday videos? Are you not doing this for attention? Well, because I'm not on social media anymore, the, the, the Daily Rants and the uh, Sunday video updates, basically, I mean, the Daily Rant, I guess, it, it just turned into a, you know, talk about whatever, whenever. But the, the Sunday video updates were meant to give my friends an idea of how I'm doing. It had nothing to do with, you know, look at me, I'm such a big shot. Um, that There's too much of that going on now. There's a, there's a big problem. And I, I've, I've pointed that out any number of times. You have people out there who are so insecure about themselves that they think they have an image to maintain. And then when they foster up this fake online persona or this, they, 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 they you know, they try to create this life for themselves that doesn't really exist. Then what they do is, is they try to duplicate that into the real world to get people to think, oh, well, you know, what we see on Facebook is exactly what we get. Well, for me, it's the other way around. If you see me, because I was a person long before, before I became a fucking uh, profile. We all were. Most of us were. I mean, we, we had a life before Facebook come along. So even before I got involved in Facebook, because I think I initially signed up with Facebook in, I don't know, 2009, 2010, I didn't care. I was too busy writing journals and poetry and, 
and you know just doing my own thing i was too busy keeping to myself to really give a fuck about what was going on in the real world i just didn't care now now that a lot of people know me for better or worse there's nothing saying that you have to come back to my channel to hear things that are going to disappoint you or to hear things that you don't like there's no rule there's nothing making you come back except for you oh what are we going to get jared fuller on this week oh we're going to spy on jared we're going to catch him in a lie or we're going to we're going to catch him in a contradiction or, or some stupid shit like that well good luck because i've been pretty consistent uh this whole time and again i i'm gonna ask for evidence of of unfounded claims that's just the way it works you know um i i would expect people to be consistent if they're if they're actually at all concerned about truth which most of them aren't um these are the kinds of people who shouldn't be uh, serving on a jury. They shouldn't be called for jury duty because what if a person actually is not guilty, but you can look at them and say, oh, well, they look guilty. Well, looking guilty and actually being guilty are two different things, or sounding guilty even. They're, two, they're, they're all very different things. They're different animals. Um, you know, you can't persecute someone if you don't know for sure if the thing they're being accused of is actually true and people get this mixed up all the time they think i'm trying to i'm trying to tell people what to think i'm not trying to tell people how uh, how to, uh, i'm trying to teach people how to think not what to think you know that's always been the case i just want people to apply uh logic and critical thinking where it matters the most which is life everywhere so when I say that I love my friends I want you to think about what I actually mean by that do you do you actually think that I mean that in a sexual way that I, I don't I, I just don't get it I don't understand that because you know I I do love my friends in a non-sexual way um, trust me if, if I loved my friends in any other way they would definitely know we would be having those conversations which by the way we don't because I don't I don't think of them that way there are I mean granted yes there, there is a particular female that I'm speaking with and you know we we talk about private things absolutely we we flirt with each other we we um, you know, we do all the things that grown people do in private. We don't share it with the fucking world because it's nobody's business. Okay? If we tell each other we love each other after everything that we've shared that was personal, then yeah. You know, if we've, you know, been intimate or if we plan to be intimate, yeah, the, 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 the definition or the usage of the word love changes because then you are in love with that person or you love them in a sexual way but there's a lot of friends that I have that we, we've talked about a lot of personal issues and I don't I still don't love them in a sexual way I love them as a friend again I can't stress this enough if, if I really and truly loved you in a sexual way you would definitely know you you would definitely know for sure and we're not just going off of of you know subjective feelings by trying to accuse me of writing something inappropriate um about children or whatever the, the rumor was we won't go half cocked on on just making assumptions we will actually have objective truth and evidence to support the claims but there there is that that part of my brain that says you know what I can love people unconditionally I can love people non-sexually that's possible they can love me in a non-sexual way I have lots of family and friends cousins and, and family who t they tell me all the time how much they love me 
And it's not a sexual thing. It's, I mean, I can't even believe I would have to actually get into detail about this kind of thing. I mean, people should intuitively already know the difference between, like I say, I love you, it's good to see you again, and be okay with that versus I love you, I want to get in bed with you, I want to get hot with you under the sheets kind of a love. That's a different kind of love. I just don't know why this is so difficult for people to understand. In 2021, we are still having issues with language barriers and and, and contexts of words, the the usages of, of words. I don't know. I, I have a I have a hard time trying to get people to understand where I'm coming from. Because like I said, tomorrow is not a guarantee. If I don't tell you today that I love you and I, I miss the opportunity, something could happen to me or something could happen to you. And you'll never know. You'll never know how I feel. You will never hear those words. You will never feel it in, in within yourself. And you know, I, I never want to make light of a delicate situation um, where people grow up in broken households. I don't want to make light of that because, like I said, as I explained earlier, uh, my parents, both of my parents, had grown up in broken households, very much so. Um, but they, I think they both had taken a vow to never raise their children the same way. Although my mom, like I said, she was, she was unjustified, I think, in a lot of the punishment that she would implement because there were things I was getting spanked for that weren't even deserving of a spanking. Like if I just wanted to go outside to play, although I couldn't be in the sun for a long time, but I could be in the shade, she would spank me for that. She would spank me for going in the store with my dad. She would spank me for a lot of just stupid reasons and a lot of it was because it, she she was punished unjustly for a lot of things too by her mother and my grandma would say a lot of just mean spirited hateful things to my mom and so that I mean that has a, a, a lifelong effect that has a lasting effect on how you uh, raise your children but I think my parents always tried to do differently with us kids because they knew how it was for them growing up. And the times were different when they were kids because, like I said, child abuse really wasn't a thing. I mean, it was it was happening, but it wasn't as bad as it is now. Like, no one ever heard of it, a lot of that back then. Nowadays, you're constantly hearing about child abuse. You're constantly hearing about, you know... Um, parents who are pieces of shit and they're deadbeat and they're absentee or they're just not parental material you hear about that a lot I mean we just had a story on the local news how a toddler was murdered and those stories every fucking time those stories make me cry every fucking time because that was an innocent life and if if, if you're going to take issue, <laughs> honestly, if you're going to take issue, more issue with the fact that I say the word fuck versus toddlers and infants being murdered as a result of a drug deal gone wrong or whatever the case may be, doesn't matter, you should reevaluate your morals and then get back with me on, on what you think is, is worse because I'm telling you, the, the 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 word fuck is it's an exclamation to a point you know i'm not using the word fuck as in having sex i'm using the word fuck as in you know how fucking stupid is it that innocent children are dying at the hands of people who can't get their shit together that's what i'm saying but again if if the word fuck is something that really just brings your world come crashing down around you and it makes your world crumble around you. You're more upset and uncomfortable at the fact that I use the word fuck as opposed to toddlers and infants being murdered. Then you really need to reevaluate your moral system. Because I'm telling you there are far worse 
things in the world than me saying the word fuck or, in fact, telling a, a friend how much I love them. Far more issues, far more worse problems in the world. So I've been here for over an hour. It's already going on 5 in the morning. So let me end the very first Daily Rant recording of the new year by saying, I love you. Whether or not you can say it back to me or whether or not you really don't love me, you don't even like me, you probably hate me, that's fine. Because I can still implement love, no matter what. And I'm still going to treat people the way that I would want to be treated. And if you know if they treat me like shit, then I'm treating them accordingly. But that doesn't mean that I'm not loving. I am. But I'm not going to take shit from people either. And I shouldn't have to. And no one should expect me to. But I will end this by saying I love you. I hope you have a wonderful day today. I hope that... Um, the new year will be better for all of us. I'm, I'm hoping that at some point the COVID is going to go away and at some point we can regain some of our normalcy. I don't know what that would entail because things will never and truly be the way they were ever again uh, after the COVID. But I'm hoping at some point we can get back to a place where love matters, people matter, and we can get over these language barriers and hurdles about uh, how we use uh, specific contexts of words. Because I'm telling you, there, there are more severe things in this world to be worrying about. And uh, even if you can't say it to me in an email or a text message, if you can't return the favor, if you're, if you're having trouble with coming to terms with that, which I, I don't understand what the big deal is. But if you're, if you're one of those people, one, if you're one of those friends listening to this and you're having a hard time coming to grips with that, well, I'll tell you that I love you anyway. And, and that's just it. I love you. And I don't have to put the qualifiers in the end saying, oh, I love you, friend, or I love you as a friend. I love you. And if you can't intuitively understand that I love you as a friend and nothing more than that, then I guess we've got nothing more to talk about. So, uh, with that being said, I hope you all have a wonderful day today. Uh, if you see someone in need of help, you know, if you feel inclined to help, please do. And uh, tell someone you love them. Because, in honesty, I love all each and every single one of you. Toodaloo!